Welcome Unsound Chess fans. What to do with the French? Once again, we're going to play somebody rated over 2300 Blitz. We're not going to do what they want. We're not going to let them lock us up in an impossible whenever. If possible, we're going to go after the H7 pawn. And in this particular case, you're going to learn an interesting thing. What a computer thinks about two bishops versus a bishop and a knight, and what that's worth exactly. Because my opponent had the two bishops, and he was doing rather well, and when he gave up the two bishops, watch what happens to the evaluation. So, we're going to turn on our handy dandy engine, and we're going to just take a look at the Bogle Yubov variation. Now, as you notice, this is not a standard move. This is a really old fashioned move. I first read about it in Manuel Asker's Common Sense and Chess, which is practically an obsolete book. But the man was an extremely old. Um, world champion, and he was a mathematician like myself, and the fact is that uh, I admire his style of play. These B moves are hard to respond to. Interesting move, huh? So I just take instead of doubling his pawns. Now we'll see what the computer recommends. He likes me to move knight to B5 with an I to D6. So now it looks like black has the advantage. We're going to go through a lot of moves here which appear to be uh, problematic. I, I was afraid of a check on h4 so I moved my knight out. Now this gives him the advantage and said he should have taken with a knight. Probably because now I moved bishop to d3 and he could have taken that off. Now it says he should try to exchange off his knight which he does not do. So this is basically an even game. However, look, we're not locked up in a hideous horrible positional mess where we can barely move our pieces. So these are uh, somewhat forced exchanges. And now that's a little bit of a gamble because uh, we could have just had a quiet, even game. And yet now we're going to get into a little wilder game. Uh, I believe the computer's recommending that he could have castled. So uh, now we can castle long or move h4. <coughs> Those of you who have been watching my channel know that h4 is probably what I'm always going to make a move toward. And now we're just going to castle. Now it says he should be trying to take my bishop off, so he plays a number one computer move, and I push, and he moves his bishop, and now it says we have a significant advantage after we take, which we do not do. So instead of taking, which would have given us a decent advantage, I decided to stop him from canceling along. Because even though it looks like is queen sides open it, it looks it's completely easy to defend so there would be no hope of like ending the game quickly which is always my goal so now he takes this off and I make the correct recapture with a C pawn which is the only capture available and it said he should have moved rook to F8 instead he goes for an exchange of queens so now we have the first sign of true cowardice you know what's he doing he's nervous he has to you know worry about his 2300 status. So here we go. Okay, should have just taken with the rook, doesn't. And now we're going to get a small advantage as he takes back that way. Okay. Now it says I should have doubled on the H file starting with rook to H6. Computers love to do that. They're very fundamental. But notice, see, he's got two bishops. I have a very slight advantage. I like the pawn structure the way it is because it, it guards an optimal number of squares, but he's looking at bishop to b5 and doing things to make my life a little bit miserable with the two bishops. So I move my king because I predicted checks coming, and that's not the exact move. Now we have virtually an even game if he moves h5, which he doesn't. Once again, he wants me to double. Even game, even game, even game, check. Okay. Now what I'm going to get this bishop on d6, which can be removed easily, but it becomes a real pain and forces him to try to exchange it off. Um, at least that was what my goal was, and now mentally, and we'll see what really happens here. Once again, even game, even game. He's got the two bishops, everything's looking good for him. He is somewhat tied down to this h-pawn and potentially backwards g-pawn after he moves it. What am I going to do? It says I should just like take control of the C file, but there's no point of entrance over there. Instead, he does. Okay, once again, even game, even game. Now, Bishop D7, he has weaknesses on his dark squares. He has to worry about me setting up things that 
appear to be mating like nuts over there and really he's got you know it, it's an even game so this is where he moves bishop to d8 because he's nervous about me getting in checks and dominating the dark squares on the king's side so take a look at that again here's the evaluation okay the evaluation says he's ahead he's ahead he's a very slightly ahead or even now look he's giving up the two bishops he's not ahead and look it says that I'm going to be almost a whole pawn up simply by trading it off, taking it. Interesting, isn't it? You know. So let's look up exactly how much this has to do with the follow up. I go over rook to c1, take over that file, fine, but he can block it off. You know. So the fact is that he's basically just giving up the two bishops, and that's worth a whole one to a computer. So get back where we can use our arrow keys I choose not to just take it off so that's a mistake that's worth half a pawn apparently so I but I do get the pawn look at this it said I was better off taking control of the C file and not winning a pawn than doing what I just did so I'm only up half a pawn if he just moves bishop to c6 I'm blockaded which he does so that's the the gist of this game and I eventually won this game in a lot of moves so it came down to like a rook and one pawn in the end and the, the fact is that I just wanted to show you what the difference is advantage wise in this particular case it's virtually even because now he's got bishop against knight that's basically how much a computer likes these bishops and it's not a very good bishop all his pawns are on white squares so the fact is that um, it was an example of what we talked about in the French earlier, which is simply not allowing them to do what they want. And we played the Bogoyubov variation of the Winiver, and that's the end of this lecture.